You guys pay six figures starting out, right? Because that's what I heard electricals get right out of school. Um, yeah, actually, no, we, we don't start at that pay. So I have never actually heard about flux capacitors R us, uh, nor this industry at all. What do you guys do? Where do I start? We actually make flux capacitors that make time travel possible. Yep, yeah, so I, I mean, I'm open for an internship, a full-time, anything really. I'm not picky, I, I'm just trying to get my foot in the door, get some experience, I'll, I'll take whatever. <laughs> We're looking for somebody very specific, and honestly, we don't really wanna be anybody's backup plan. Hey friends, Nenit here. So this video is about how to stand out at the engineering career fair and get offered a position. Clearly, there was something wrong with all three of those clips, which we'll discuss in this video. I've been in your shoes before as an undergraduate looking for my first position, but now I'm on the other side of the fence as an engineering manager, and I go to career fairs looking for candidates to hire. Let's go over four ideas that you can use to stand out at the career fair and get a call back. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I will show you a much better approach and what that looks like. So first thing, be professional. And that starts out with you dressing the part, okay? This is a career fair. You're not coming back from the gym. You're not going on a date. You're going there to get a professional position. In most cases, this might be your very first time working in the professional industry. So guys, that means nice collared shirts, suits, ladies, business casual. First impressions are important because you probably only have a few minutes with the recruiters or the engineering managers that you're speaking to. So make sure you know, you've cleaned up, done your hair, brush your teeth, I hope you brush your teeth every day, but everything that's gonna make you look and feel as good as you possibly can. Be sure to smile. That is an obvious thing to do, a very easy thing to do, but when you're having a conversation with somebody, you wanna put out that positive vibe, all right? Nobody wants to hire somebody who's, who's slouchy and just, you know, looking around and, and you know, I don't, I don't really know what I'm looking for, right? You wanna be positive, maybe not over the top, but you wanna smile, that goes a long way. Because what are you really doing here, right? You're trying to convince somebody to hire you. So really, you're now in the selling business. Okay, whether you like it or not, engineers have to sell. In this case, you are selling yourself. A book I always go back to is called Convince Them in 90 Seconds by Nicholas Boothman. There are some really good tips in here. It's a very short read, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Ones that really stick out for me are to position your heart facing the person that you're speaking to. It neutralizes the situation a little bit more. And also try to mimic their tone, what they're doing with their hands. Some people might have their arms folded. Some might have their arms to the side. Some might be a bit more fidgety. If they're loud, you speak a little louder. If they're soft, you speak a little softer. Those things put you on the same wavelength as somebody else. Okay, because really at the end of the day, the managers are gonna have a stack of resumes and they're gonna say, well, you know, who did you like? What did you think? What was the vibe? With a new hire, you're not expecting somebody to, you know, be the next Einstein. You just want them to perform. It's sort of that sixth sense that people have, and certainly women are better at this than men, amongst many other things. There's a gut reaction you have when you meet somebody, and you want that to be a positive one for you. Second thing is to do your research. Have a game plan. I cannot stress this enough. This is the most important thing. Oftentimes at these career fairs, there might be 30, 40, 50, 100 plus companies in there. So you have to have an idea of which ones you wanna to talk to. That means creating a spreadsheet as we engineers like to do. That way you can outline and quickly look at your cheat sheet as you're going through. Now, a couple things. Of course, you'll have two or three companies that you wanna to talk to. There are very famous companies in every single industry, but you're not the only one who thinks that. Most of the other students are going to realize that same thing as well. And the competition is going to be higher for those companies. So what you should do, in fact, is to go in reverse. If you're really trying to get a job at, let's say, Lockheed Martin, and that's who you're really trying to target down, do not go to them first because many others are going to flock to them as well. Wait a little bit towards the end and go to them when there will be less people around them. Yes, the managers there are gonna be a little bit more tired, but that'll give you more of an opportunity to shine because you'll come out there, you'll feel really good, you'll be prepared to talk to them as you've been waiting this entire time. And you'll stick in their minds more because you'll be the last one that was there. Do not overlook the smaller companies. If a company is smaller, they might actually have an even better opportunity for you and a better chance to grow. In a smaller company, it's not nearly as corporate, so you might have more opportunities to climb. 
put them on your list. On your spreadsheet, write down a couple tidbits about the company, where they're located, about how many people there are, the major industries that they're targeting, and what it is that they might be looking for. Those types of things will come up in conversation and you will really wow the hiring manager, especially if it's a small to medium sized unknown company might not have as much glitz and glamor as let's say Lockheed Martin, or in our case, Flux Capacitors R Us. Which by the way, I love Back to the Future of course, I'm a big nerd and I have a DeLorean on my desk. So what a great example to go with. By doing the heavy lifting up front, you're actually saving yourself a ton of time down the road. You need to go in knowing who it is you're looking for and what industry you'd want to be in. A mistake you want to avoid is starting out in a role in an industry and then three, four years later deciding, nope, I don't want to do this at all. I want to do something totally different. Of course, you won't know what the role entails until you actually get hired, but you can do some research, okay? Go on Google, look up a day in the life of videos regarding the space that you want to enter and you'll find people's experiences, figure out what you want and be prepared, do the research. Thirdly, be service minded. Don't just think about yourself. In the one clip, the student asks, hey, wait, how much am I gonna get paid? That is the opposite approach that you wanna take here. Position your mind to think not only about yourself, but about the person that you're talking to. What can I offer them? Because of course, at the end of the day, you wanna work for a good company, make a lot of money and all that good stuff. The manager is not thinking that, not at all. They're not thinking about you, they're thinking about themselves. So you need to take that one step further and think about the manager in this case and the company and what it is that you can offer them. Be service minded. Think about going to your favorite restaurant and what the servers are like, how they approach you and what they do. They're very service minded. They want you to have a good experience. That's exactly what you wanna have here, that mentality. And this interaction that you're having with the manager, that is your time to display that you have those abilities. The fourth thing is to have intention and know what it is that you are looking for. Don't just be browsing. Don't say, I'm open to anything, I'm open to whatever. The companies wanna know that they're wanted. Have intention on what it is you're looking for, whether it's a full-time position, an internship, specifically what industry you wanna be in. That's where you've done your research and you know at this point. You might have two or three industries and that's okay. If you're going as a freshman or a sophomore, and even as a junior, of course you can browse a bit more because then at this point you're just, you're trying to test the waters of different spaces. But if you're going as a senior, at this point, you should know exactly who you're trying to target. People sound desperate when they say, I'll just, I'll just take whatever. Yeah, this is good enough, your company's good enough, I'll take whatever. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to be the second choice or the backup plan. No, these companies and these managers, they wanna feel wanted. They want people to come to them and say, hey, look, I really wanna work for you and here's how I can help you achieve your goals. Desperation reeks in all aspects of life, not only in relationships, but obviously here in this conversation you're trying to have with this person, in this case, to get a full-time position. So don't be desperate, have some intention about what it is you're looking for and go for it. I don't wanna to get too woo-woo-y over here. However, having the right mindset really works. What helps me out is to actually meditate. And there are a lot of ways you can do this. It's basically just taking a minute or two for yourself and just recognizing the thoughts that are coming in and being okay with them. Another thing we can do to get our minds in the right place is to have a good affirmation. So what's an affirmation? It's basically a, a statement that you repeat and over time, this is now law of attraction, it starts to get ingrained into you. You can say it out loud with me or next time you're in the shower or whatever it is, but here we go. I am confident in my abilities to help flux capacitors are us, succeed that they will bend over backwards to offer me a position. I'm not sure how this stuff works, but really by telling yourself this, you start to plant this idea in your mind, this seed. And if you read about and listen to all the most successful people in the world, they do this in some way, shape, or form. Now, as promised, I said I would show you a more successful approach to speaking with flux capacitors are us. Hi. Hi there. Flux capacitors are us. So I've always wanted to work in the time travel industry ever since I was a kid, which is why I went to school for electrical engineering. I know that you guys are industry leader in this space and that you're trying to grow the flux side of your business. But with my educational background and my love of circuitry, 
I think that I would be a great fit for your team and that I could actually make an immediate impact. Wow, great, that totally sums up everything that we're after. One thing to note, the more competition that there is for a role, and we all know which ones they are, for the big companies that everyone wants to work for, the more that you have to show how valuable you are to the company. And you can do that by being proactive. So in our example here, if your goal is to get hired at Flux Capacitors R Us, well then maybe you've tried to actually build a Flux Capacitor yourself. Here's a Flux Capacitor. It's not, it's obviously a little sand timer thing. But what you can do is, you can have that on your resume, okay? Or even as you're talking to the hiring manager, you can kind of have a funny story about, hey, look, I actually, I've tried to build a flux capacitor myself. Here's the video and all that. That's, that shows incredible initiative. Be proactive and show them that you're actually trying to apply the skills that you're learning. That'll stick out in their minds. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it brought some value to you and that it helps you out the next time you go to an engineering career fair. If it did, please hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what your takeaways were. And until next time, have a good one.